In the previous unit, we've seen that conduction of heat is the transport of energy through a physical medium without transport of mass. So if we had enough information on the contact area between the objects that are exchanging heat, their temperature difference, the thickness of the boundary between them, and so on, we would be able to answer the question how quickly does the heat flow from one object to the other? First of all, let's define the flow rate of heat. Heat flow rate, delta Q over delta T, is defined as the amount of energy flowing per unit time. So that's measured in joules per second. For example, you could take a metal rod of a certain length and width, and you could keep the ends of the metal rod at two different temperatures, say T high and T low. You will observe heat flowing from the hot end to the cold end at a certain rate. Say you measure the amount of heat that flows in 10 seconds. You could compare that with a rod made of the same material but with wider cross-section between the same temperatures, T high and T low. You will observe that more heat flows in the same amount of time in the wider rod than it does in the narrower rod. In a separate experiment, you could take a metal rod between the same high temperature and low temperature and compare it with a longer rod kept between the same temperatures. You will observe that the amount of heat flowing in 10 seconds say, in the shorter rod is greater than that flowing in the longer rod in the same amount of time. Of course you could also vary the temperature difference between the ends. Putting all these results together you can say that is experimentally found that the heat flow rate through a solid support is proportional to the cross-sectional area and inversely proportional to the length. It's proportional to the temperature difference between the ends, delta T, and finally if you wish to compare identical rods made of different materials, for example a glass rod and a copper rod, then you will see that the heat flow rate is a function of this parameter called little kappa, the thermal conductivity of the material. That explains, for example, why hot coffee will cool down much faster if it was put in a metal cup instead of a ceramic cup. That is because the thermal conductivity of metal is much greater than the thermal conductivity of ceramic. So here is a formal definition of thermal conductivity that you could derive from the previous formula. Thermal conductivity of a material is a measure of how fast heat travels a unit distance through a unit cross-sectional area as a result of a 1 Kelvin temperature difference. The units are joules per second meter Kelvin. So that essentially is, <clears throat> those can be derived by doing the dimensional analysis of the formula we've just shown. For different materials, we have quite a range of thermal conductivity. Metals have a relatively high thermal conductivity and for that reason are considered good conductors of heat. On the other hand, glass, water, styrofoam, are poor conductors of heat and that shows in the value of their thermal conductivity. Air is a particularly poor conductor of heat as long as it's dry and the thermal conductivity of air is 0 0.026 joules per second meter Kelvin. Here's an example. 2.8 meter long metal rods have their ends kept at the same temperature difference. The first rod with 1 cm radius is made of aluminum. The second rod with 2 cm radius is made of iron. What is the ratio between the rates at which heat is carried by the two rods? First of all we could make a sketch. If the two rods are kept between the same temperatures, one practical way of doing that would be to have their ends touch common metal plates which makes the two ends have the same T high and T low and let's say this is the aluminum rod and this is the iron rod 
we actually don't know the temperature difference but let's apply the equation for heat flow rate twice for the two materials for aluminum is going to be the thermal conductivity of aluminum times the cross-sectional area of the aluminum rod times delta T divided by the length L by the way the length is the same so we can just call it L without subscripts and for the iron we have thermal conductivity of iron cross-sectional area of iron delta T divided by L the ratio between these flow rates is thermal conductivity of iron cross-sectional area of iron divided by thermal conductivity of aluminum cross-sectional area of aluminum where the delta T over L have cancelled and since we have the radii and we are assuming a cylindrical shape we can write K kappa iron pi r iron squared divided by kappa aluminum pi r aluminum squared that is kappa iron over kappa aluminum divided by r iron over r aluminum squared we look up the thermal conductivities for the aluminum is 240 joules per second meter Kelvin and for iron is 79 joules per second meter Kelvin and at this point all we have to do is plug in the numbers And the answer is approximately 0.2.